I've opted to sort of sign people up for a teach-in and future actions as opposed to petitions. So that's what you're referencing. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, I'll be hosting a teach-in in, I think, three weeks. That's what that is for. Um, sign up for that here, and I'll be emailing that information to folks later. My name is Grace, and I'm out here with several members of the Vermont community, the Montpelier community. Um, and we're here to take action to stop Line 3, which is a tar sands pipeline running from Alberta, Canada, through uh, Michigan and the heart of Anishinaabe territory, all the way to Superior, Wisconsin. Um, the pipeline is undergoing reconstruction by the company Enbridge, um, which has received funding from a cohort of financial institutions, including TD Bank, which is why we're positioned here outside of the bank. Um, and this is just a crucial part of the fight for climate justice um, to really cut off the money pipeline and resist new fossil fuel infrastructure so that we can usher in a new green economy that works for all of us. Um, the pipeline directly violates indigenous rights, indigenous sovereignty, and it also contributes to the climate crisis. It's the equivalent of building 50 coal-fired power plants. It also brings man camps to Anishinaabe communities, and we know what happens in these man camps, and we know that the Miss it, that the silent epidemic of missing and murdered indigenous women is particularly bad um, when these man camps um, come to build these pipelines. Really concerning to me that it, it hasn't had a lot of mainstream media attention. Um, when folks I think have been working on this since 2014, the um, indigenous communities on the front lines have been doing incredible work putting their bodies um, on the line to literally stop this pipeline from being built, to stop their wild rice from being decimated, um, and to, to help their communities and help all of us really, um, who um, this pipeline is, is a very bad thing for climate change. It is completely within Biden's power to ask them to revoke the permit. He has not done this. It is within his power to stop it. He has not stopped it. He could still stop it. We started coming here in 2014 because TD Bank was uh, underwriting the Keystone XL pipeline. And we came back, well, we came back uh, all throughout two summers at least and maybe, maybe more. Um, in 2015, 2016, uh, we came back here because uh, TD Bank was underwriting the uh, Dakota Access Pipeline. And now we're here because they're one of the major investors in the Enbridge Line 3 Pipeline that's running through indigenous land in Minnesota and where there's uh, fierce opposition, resistance, ongoing resistance by indigenous people there. The, the Biden administration has taken um, a position against Keystone XL, which is great, but they, if they were to apply the same standards to the Dakota Access Pipeline, they'd shut that down, and they certainly should shut, stop the, the pipeline in Wisconsin, Minnesota. Um, yeah, I'm here to encourage them to do that, to stop that. Enbridge has one of the worst safety records of any pipeline company and they've had numerous leaks on all of their pipelines. If this pipeline is continued to be built 
it has the possibilities, high possibilities, of leaking into waterways that the indigenous people use for their wild rice and their subsistence for living. This pipeline also carries some of the dirtiest, dirtiest oils in the world, which is the tar sands oils that come from Alberta. And they're bringing it down into the United States for processing. Uh, most people don't know where their oil comes from or how dangerous it really is. And this is extremely, extremely high polluting when it comes to greenhouse gases. Um, yeah, this, this is an abomination, this pipeline. It should not be built. Um, there are other pipelines also that are, that are just a horrible, horrible idea. One of them is Line 5, which is going under the Great Lakes. And if that line is to burst, it will pollute the drinking water for millions and millions of people. And it's not something that will be cleaned up. This is something that will be a forever, ever sacrifice zone. And that's what these companies are doing. They're creating, they're creating these sacrifice zones all over the world. And they are affecting mostly indigenous people and uh, environmental justice communities where black and brown people live. Um, it is a real justice issue and um, it has to end. We need to get on to clean, green energy as soon as we can. Thank you. This is a promise to keep on striking.